Hello everyone and welcome to the 8th episode in the series of things you may have missed in The Witcher 3. This is going to be a weird one because originally I did not intend on making it, but ever since the Triss and Yennefer videos, people have been asking about one about Ciri. I simply thought that I'm not aware of enough interesting things for a whole video about her, but many of you seem interested, so I'm going to give it a try and come up with at least 5. By the way, if you've missed the previous episodes, you can look at the playlist down in the description. I fear this video might be inferior to the rest, but oh well. Now let's have a look at some of the interesting details I can remember surrounding our lovely ashen-haired lass. Oh, and before I begin, everything I'm about to cover will be based entirely on what we see in the third game. There will be no references to the books, for which I'm sure you guys will tell me all about in the comments. Okay. Thing you may have missed about Ciri number 1. Towards the end of the previous episode in Skellige, I talked about the missing crabs next to Avalach's tent, so let us go back to that same place right after speaking to him and the sorceresses. Makes sense. <laughs> you can then explore the Nilfgaardian camp before starting the final battle, and if you choose to go right behind it here, you can stumble upon Ciri who is practicing her Jedi powers, so to speak, levitating a bunch of stones. Ah, shit! Looks like you're making progress. Mm-hmm. Slow, but gradually forward. It's not quite working out, it seems, but apparently she got the hang of it, judging by what she did right afterwards. I should go. All right. A small bonus here is that if you take the long route to the place through this cave here, you can also loot a chest full of goodies on your way right before you meet her. Alright, that's it for number one. Moving on to number two. And from nearly the ending of the game, we're going back all the way to the beginning of Velen, where we meet the Bloody Baron for the first time. Mm -hmm. you. And he tells us how Ciri arrived at Crow's Perch. During that gameplay section where you play as her, after you find Gretka, there is a victim Siri investigates to determine who the killer was. The thing you may have missed here is that if she does not fully exhaust every option, Siri will make the wrong conclusion, namely that it was a fiend who killed the man. Everything seems to suggest a fiend. What happened to him? He had a fall. My bet. Based upon that, she'll then decide to gather herbs for brewing the incorrect blade oil. Oil? You mean like we make from rapeseed? No. A far more special oil. Of dog tallow, bull's parsley, wolf's liver, and mistletoe. The fiend will feel terrible, terrible pain. You're smart. Afterwards, when she finally finds the werewolf, She'll tell Gretka how the oil will do no good, and during the actual fight, Ciri's damage per hit will be noticeably lower. The Wolf King, now do you believe me? I do! Hide! Will it be any good? The oil you made? Not unless we want to anger it. And for a quick comparison, here's what happens if she gets it right. The Wolf King's no fantasy, it seems. Except, he's a werewolf. You mean like we make from rapeseed? No, a far more special oil. Of dog tallow, wolf's bane, fool's parsley, and wolf's liver. The Wolf King will feel terrible, terrible pain. You're smart. This is probably my favorite detail in the list, and I even showed it to the few people who watched me stream on Twitch way back in the day. And speaking of my old streams, Here's yet another thing that I discovered there. Um, that's more of a bug, I suppose, but once again it happens while you play as Siri, and it's kind of funny, so why not mention it here? Thing you may have missed, number three. It takes place during the Battle of Kaer Morhen in the second section we get to play as Siri. You know, the one where she helps Eskel fight the Wild Hunt? This one is a little tricky to trigger, but I think there are a few specific locations where if you interact with Eskel, instead of his generic response, 
you will actually trigger his dialogue scene inside Kaer Morin's keep, the one with Geralt. However, Geralt's model will appear with no clothes on and with all the frozen textures on his body and face that he gets in the end of the Battle of Kaer Morin, even though that technically hasn't yet happened. Oh, I was stupefied when this happened for the first time. This the catacan you had a contract What? <laughs> um, and later on, in fact, much later, probably more than a year, only after making my um, Things You Missed in Care Morin video, a couple of people mentioned that you can get a similar scene with Yalmar. During the same gameplay section, you can actually find him standing right where Ciri was training as a little girl. Just click on him and the same thing happens. Frozen Geralt just starts talking to him amidst the battle. Ah, Geralt! How are things? You and Ciri, as I remember, you two grew up together, at least for a while. Aye. Tried to outdo her once. Smashed me mouth on a rock. And then you went to Krach and announced you'd agreed to wed. You hear of that? Aye, we had twelve winters on us, both. Any thought of continuing that romance? Me da whipped it out of me head. <laughs> Alright, and now that I've mentioned my Care Morin video, one final point here, in case you guys haven't seen it. Before the battle, you can actually find Ciri herself standing here, and you can talk to her before you enter the keep and start the briefing. She has a short line about her training here as a child. Okay, we're done with number three, uh, let's go to the next one. Now, first I thought about making two points out of this, then I thought everyone probably already knows it, so I decided not to mention it at all, and now finally I made up my mind, so I'll combine the two details in one, and hopefully you guys wouldn't mind. After all, they're both parts of the Hearts of Stone expansion, so they go well together. The first one is that you can ask Ciri, in addition to Yen, Triss and Rages, My utterances are indeed towards the taciturn, for even the longest discourse would not allow me to explain to my interlocutor any issue of this purview satisfactorily. About the mark Gontaro Dim puts on your face. The dialogue gives us a bit of a... a bit of an insight on Ciri's style of clothing. The uh, mark on my face. Is it noticeable? Hard in the eyes? A bit. But you can't let it bother you. You know, folk would stare at the scar on my cheek, always. It used to upset me greatly. And? I started undoing one shirt button more. Problem solved. I should go. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. The second one is that if you decide not to bargain for Olgierd's soul in the end of the expansion, you can actually ask the Man of Glass about how to keep Ciri from the danger that looms over her, meaning the worst ending. And in response, Gontor Odim will indirectly tell you how to avoid that ending. He talks about each one of the five choices that determine it, not selling Ciri to Emir, 10, 20, 30, playing snowballs with her, it always works, hey! trashing Avalach Slab, Letting her speak to the sorceresses alone. You were eavesdropping. Yes. No. And joining her to find Skull's grave. <laughs> Something you have to keep in mind here, though, you can't get both of these things in one playthrough, as far as I'm aware. To ask Siri about the mark, first you gotta find her, obviously, and if you've already found her, I'm not sure whether or not you can ask Gontor Odim about her. Um, in case you haven't finished the game yet, I assume not, but perhaps some of you guys will confirm or deny that. And that's about all I have here. Thing you may have missed about our shapely lass, number 5. <laughs> if she's shapely, what does it matter? <laughs> Did you know that if Ciri becomes Empress, she'll marry this guy? Maybe. So, Morvan here, has a piece of dialogue that I think can be missed fairly easily. It takes place right outside of Lady Lavalette's house, which is close to the morgue. Uh, you visited during the Broken Flowers quest while searching for Molly. Anyway, 
In this short conversation, he implies that his father, who's very close to the emperor, will arrange a marriage between Ciri and most likely himself, which also makes him potentially the next emperor of Nilfgaard. You know a lot. I must. I am my father's son. What's your father got to do with this? Um, he is close to the emperor and knows the opposition, knows they press for abdication. Ceding the throne to Cyrilla, it's the best the emperor can do. But as is known, an empress needs an emperor at her side. My father will ensure the right man is chosen. Farewell. Of course, we never get that far into the story, but I thought it's a curious detail nevertheless. So there we have it, the best I could come up with when faced with the challenge of making a Missed Things video about Siri. I got so worked up that I forgot my shameless plug I usually do about two-thirds into these videos. So um, tell me what you think of everything I talked about, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider giving this video a like and perhaps subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet done so. If not, well, thank you for watching at least, and special thanks to everyone who chose to support me on Patreon or the YouTube membership thingy and helped make all of this possible. Alright, until the next one, stay tuned and be good.